so uh, one more time. So thank you all for coming. Uh, so this is technically an informal chat. But we are really the benefit of the wider uh, Malaysian uh, designer scene. So some people cannot come. They're like <laughs> traveling. They've got family. Yep. Uh, they're just not in KL. Yep. So we want to make like the discussions here accessible to them. So you know, if, and because this is not a talk show or any sort of real <laughs> show. So I'm not gonna like moderate you if you want to like go off. A I heard this was like Jerry Springer's, and we're gonna throw chairs later. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was just gonna say. <laughs> um, and just no like, aircon will. No, that would that would end and we think that. Enrage. Just that I will have to be responsible. <laughs> okay. Um. So yeah, th like just relax. You know, have some drinks, have some food. Yeah. Discuss whatever you want to because we're all we have all got stake in like I guess the board game industry and we've got, we all bring our different like experiences and uh, expertise. Uh, don't you know? Just ask whatever question you want. Uh, but the lens, hopefully, that we want to kind of circle around is in real life events, lah. So, uh, and I know you've got like interest in launches. I saw I saw your Facebook event. Uh, I want to try to make it. Yes, um, and you know we, Chunyan has yet to formally launch in KL as well, mm, I think. Mm. And Drama Poker Studio is coming up as mm. well. Uh, some people, so everybody's got like you know if you if you want to have a game, you eventually want to launch it as well. And because we, most of us are self-publishers, we don't have a another big company to deal with for us. So I was just um, just quickly summarizing Alpha Meet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so Alpha Meet is our game testing event so primarily <laughs> for okay. those of you who really, can't really see we're watching our co-designers try and kill themselves just to get <laughs> some more air con yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um so yeah so that one we, we tried to hold the intention was to hold it once a month but again like there's not a lot not enough manpower to hold it once a month mm -hmm. depends on the number of games that want to be there as well. oh so that's how it turns on i'm sure there's no remote yes no remote, there is a okay. remote <laughs> i mean there's no yeah there's uh, very good amazing <laughs> but then it's amazing could be in a drawer over there or something yeah uh, we'll find it when we don't need it but, <laughs> okay, okay, but done already. Just come down and sit and talk. But he opted to go with the dexterity and rap instead of the wisdom check, so. <laughs> but he passed, it's okay. No, because there's no gaming booklet. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, we do alpha meets now effectively every two or three months at usually a, a game cafe. Uh, and then this meetup is also relatively new as a series. But, uh, and then we. Uh, when is your next alpha meet? We don't know. <laughs> In six months, I'll, I'll, for sure, I'll come again. Okay. Uh, <laughs> if you can time that perfectly, then it fits actually, my visa renewal. We can. Okay. What, <laughs> what, one thing, like, since we've grown and in name and um, in size on, on, online, uh, people, we haven't actually communicated this very well to people, which is we will host Alpha Meets as and when there is demand and like there are games which are ready to be tested. Mm -hmm. So you just post, I want to play test, a, I want a play test and we can try to get an Alpha Meet together. So right. it's really that ad hoc. Okay. Uh, there's no set date for it yet because there's no set person to do it. Mm -hmm. And there was a team that was propping up in the last Delta chat as well. Um, with that being said, um, we also did, we, like, some of us uh, are, have been active in trying to push board games into uh, unexplored territory, like expanding markets. So Trinian and I were co-organizers, Fasem was part as well for the GTF launch, uh, sorry, a GTF event that we titled uh, Tabletop and Interactive Showcase, which we tried to um, open up to uh, Penang publics and the art scene as well of like uh, the intricacies of board game design expressed through local board games. Uh, that was so so we had about 150 to 200 people every day, yeah. which means that and it was like three, two and a half days, so times 2.5 lot of that. Uh, so not a lot like it's okay for an art exhibition, but in term, for mass market, it's not that great. Uh, a lot of our board games, I think the board game stores were like not that pleased because of the relatively low footfall as compared to a large convention. Um, I, you probably have better uh, mileage at 
no, the big, the big, uh, big stuff like you know, world, world urban forum and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, because people came for it at the yeah. forum, yeah, and we were just kind of like a space filler. Yeah, so we yeah. just had, yeah, the, those eyeballs or the follow up from mm-hmm. speed away from that. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and when we first, when the first eight of us initially started in DMI, there were uh, besides the alpha mates, we wanted to do. Uh, a beta con, which is a proper proto spiel, which is like a big convention or maybe like 20, 30, 100 tables for just people to test out their board games with each other over like a span of two or three days. Uh, if not, uh, what we call, uh, what was labeled as a gamma wave, which was uh, game launches. Um, but so far, uh, in the last three years, there are not that many people within. TTG DMY ambit that wanted to do game launches because you know that that's the speed in which things yep. come along. Um, and but now you know with with all of you, uh, we've got more. There's a little bit more critical mass now. Uh, so that's why I'm to like get do this like chats um, as a whole to kind of just get the ball rolling on these things again now. Okay. So, um, so now the ball is in your court. Um, I don't know if we want to take like one minute a person to introduce each other, because not uh, I guess like not everybody knows each other at the moment. Yeah. And uh, what kind of, what kind of games you are doing, and like what uh, what events do you actually hope to do as well? Right. So let's go this way. Now. Okay. Uh, I'm Chunyan, and. I just published my first game. Which you don't you can bring. Well, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm on my way to Singapore, so okay. <laughs> no way. No. We just set it up yesterday. Oh, is it why did you set it up yesterday? We set it up like, just we got friends visiting oh, this weekend. Okay. Oh that's nice. Okay, so so it's called Kakirima. And um, and uh, what I'm interested in uh, today is the gamma waves. Mm. Where where hopefully a bunch of designers can have like a like a launch party of the games that have been come up have been have come up like the last year yeah this past year yeah okay uh, hi everyone I'm Hua Xiang that was uh, mentioned in previous Delta chat the Hua Xiang okay no Hua Xiang no 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 I'm the creator of Vegan Dash and. Uh, I work on Kleptopoly as well, and also uh, Math Genius. And um, yeah, I'm here to listen to the discussion, and I don't have anything in mind yet. Yeah. We've never really had like a launch launch for Vagrant Dash, right? Nope. Okay, we probably need to do that. And maybe uh, you can team up. <laughs> yeah. I know, you can, I can join the Gamma Wave if uh, Yay, okay. that's awesome. needed. And I'm, get... I'm writing out some <laughs> questions uh, okay. for later. Okay, right, good because like I'll I... try to help you to do the minutes as well. Oh, can. that's really good. Okay, I, I, I've not actually prepared a, lo- a list of questions. Yeah, I think you so probably just whatever. Yeah, I'm just like whatevering it. I'm not. It's not. It's not a talk show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <We're at Dalton. laughs> All right. Okay. Um, that good. can't be my child. <laughs> <laughs> um, hi, I'm uh, Clifford. Um, I juggle. A lot of things. Um, uh, so in my spare time, I, I run a company that actually is in beekeeping and honey production. So that's a day job. Then in my spare time, uh, I've been trying to design, take what I've learned from that, and then turn it into a game. So uh, so I've been working on and off on uh, developing a game about bees. So so trying to make it interesting and engaging while at the same time being quite scientifically um, accurate accurate yeah so uh, yeah so that game is in development um, uh, and, uh, and is it about bees or beekeeping it's about bees uh, okay. beekeeping is the next phase can you okay. check the next sorry can you check the power outlet yeah. there yeah, is, yeah. yeah okay is. now it is because okay. it gets loose and like my my computer goes like right. are these people oh, here for us Hello, Hi. are you here for the game design meeting? Yeah. Alright, cool, we're just introducing each other. Uh, there's a and we also yeah, kind of like to meet you. Let's place them. Okay, let's just sit there. You're smaller. 
It's so convincing. Well, you guys think I want to stay off? Yeah, just grab a chair, grab a chair. He's a wanted man that can't be seen on camera. Okay, so um, actually, okay, since you guys just joined us, we might as well. Oh, we've been on the live stream. So okay, but all okay, right. So you know, uh, we Jen. just starting to. Oh, you were watching on the way Yeah, yeah. Right. Right. yeah. Right. Cliff. This is Cliff. All right, and uh, we're just going over there. Mm -hmm. Right, Amisha. That's lunch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, <laughs> we worked on the game for three years, or we worked on an idea to teach environmental education for three years. And then we decided somewhere in between, instead of just making flashcards, we'll turn it into a game. It's called Rimba the Card Game. I think most of you have seen it somehow. Um, so we've been selling it since uh, um, the third day of Chinese New Year. Wow. Okay, yeah, like very specific. Right? <laughs> very, very on and very on. <laughs> My partner's Chinese. Huh? <laughs> so, um, it's a strategic launch. You like not Chinese really. New Year. So it's the it. pressure because we missed Christmas the pre previous year. Uh, okay. And I mean, we, 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 we've been trying to just get out there and play a lot. I play with different people as well and I'm very interested in this particular session also because I am available today but it's also about the launch stuff and we will get back to that when we get back to that okay yeah so it's about animals yes Malaysian animals cool cool uh, hi I'm Buddy from the US I live in Bali though so coming to Malaysia was convenient for me um, and I didn't know how big the gaming and design community here was. It's actually pretty pretty awesome compared to Bali. We have one one board game store called Downtime Cafe, which is pretty cool. But it's only there's only one, right? So they got 150 board games. It's a pretty nice place to hang out. Um, yeah, I'm working on three board games right now. One I hope to have finished by the end of this month, and then start selling to publishers uh, either in the U.S. or the U U.K. Yeah, and then uh, as far as I'm also interested in in kind of the topic for the day, which is getting more live events. Mm -hmm. For me, the the need is to get different groups of play testers so that I get, you know, I got a pretty good group here in Bali that does hobby games, mm -hmm. but then also testing you know more casual people, different people that like different games, not uh, not necessarily the games that I always like. And then yeah, also events for growing just board games in general in Bali would be good. So cool. And uh, why does our two new jo recent joinees uh, introduce ourselves? Yeah, yeah. So um, I'm I'm Pai. Uh, I have actually um, both a professional and personal interest in uh, this community. And what you guys do, um, we will think it's pretty cool that there's a lot of uh, uh, support for new designers uh, for games. I wouldn't say a lot, but okay. Well, <laughs> well there's, there's nothing at all, right? Uh, I mean, I, we, we, we play board games uh, pretty often and lately. Uh, I'm, from, I'm from a company that's actually in software, but software for uh, great products. Um, and, um, you know, we, we, we don't make games per se. Um, but um, we, we work on, on um, video games as part of the product that are on the platform. Um, so tabletop games are kind of something that we're interested in. Okay. Uh, and we'd like to support the cause. Um, Do you have an office closer to KL? <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, we're, we're based in Monkara. Monkara, okay. Yeah. So closer to you. Yeah. <laughs> This Rose, she works with yeah. Okay, so... Hi, Rose. Hi, Rose. Hi, Rose. <laughs> okay, so, uh, actually, why I don't you like... Uh, since... Yeah, so I guess, I, I don't know if like we just want to jump into the, the topic of like, how do we organize a, a, a joint uh, a joint game launch with all the designers, uh, including those who are not present as well. Because like, uh, I think the strongest like thread so far, at least, at least for both of you. Um, so you've got your game launch coming up soon, right? So what, so what are your plans for that actually? Yeah, that's totally coincidental mm -hmm. because we're doing some work for Goethe Institute mm -hmm. and... Pardon? I'm not him. Oh. It's <laughs> so I just so happened to be uh, on a project where we're talking about um, Alexander von Humboldt who was one of the people who started the conversation and did a lot of data collection around ecology, ecosystems and the environment. So this is like 250 years ago. And so the Germans are now uh, doing a 250 year anniversary for Humboldt. And because of that, they are working with Kula Lupo at Publica uh, come in early October. 
So because I am doing that project with them, um, and we were talking to Hardish, the guy behind Pop Digital, he saw the game because we are playing the game as part of one of the session activities. And he goes like, have you guys launched this? Then we were like, no. Would you like to launch it with us? Then we were like, we can't afford any venue. It's okay, I will give it to you for free. So yeah, yeah, it is very lucky for us that uh, we got the venue for free and it's black box and it's public. Oh and wow, okay, it's black box. And nice. it's part of uh, Kuala Lumpur Festival, mm -hmm. which means I don't have to tell people to go there. It's already part of a bigger event. So I think that's a really good key point to take. I don't know how it's going to turn out because I've never done it before. But it sounds like it's got like, you know, good points to check off on your list. It's part of a bigger event. It's got a wider audience because I think a lot of people who played Bimba will tell you that it's not really a strategy game. It's not really a game for gamers. It's more an educational tool, but you learn through play and that's the audience that we're trying to address. So in that sense, it makes sense to be at that festival. So I know uh, Chunian and I were talking about like, you know, launching in the right place with uh, partners that align with your goals. Because you did it with um, Heritage Fest. Josh Fest, Fest, which is very heritage related. Then. So I think that's something that we, we kind of had a conversation about <clears throat> with whether it's suitable or not. So for us, when we've been playing game play days everywhere else, we've always been aligned to um, the forestry department. And so we've always been at those spaces. Mm. So then we, when we talked about it, we were like, how do you launch this with environment people? They won't come to events, you know. Right, it's like very oxymoron. Mm. Forest, environment, ecosystem, and then event, urban, it just doesn't jive. So in this sense, there was a good mashup. Mm. So we're just very lucky. La. And then we're just trying to make sure that we, because I know a lot of people say like, uh, Politico did a really good launch, especially when they did their, um, their digital platform launch. Uh, okay, yeah, it got some coverage. Right? Mm. Yeah, so we kind of took some uh, some pointers from there. And instead of just having um, gameplay, we also have like a forum bit. So we've got uh, people who, basically what we want to have discussed is, um, why ed biodiversity conservation education is important for everyone, not just kids in school, not just youth in college, not just adults who are working, or not just the industry. It needs to be for all, number one. Number two, we wanted to highlight um, <clears throat> how learning to, to play and creative education actually creates behavior change. Mm -hmm. And then the third thing is we wanted to be able to have a voice that endorses that this type of strategy is the strategy to go towards as we develop as a as a country in, in creating more advocacy. So because of that, I've got a panel of three people representing these three kind of points of view for us to have a session called Conservation Ed. And then there's like a rumble with Rimba where people have to play like a little Olympiad. So that's all I've got really and I, I think that's more than enough for an hour's opening mm. space. Yeah. Any, any thoughts so far on how you would like your launch to be like? Well, uh, Kakiluma has already I had know. his uh, it's a individual launch, uh, as Misha mentioned. Uh, and um, we didn't have to pay for a venue. Yeah. But, I, but I also wanted to have it out in the streets or slash five foot way of Georgetown. You know, the environment mm. reflecting uh, or the game reflecting the environment mm. and vice versa. So 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 when Georgetown Festival uh, call for proposal came out, then then uh, alongside the TTGD MY showcase, then I also submitted a, a, a proposal for launching Chucky Lima. There, you know, have have people come in and play and uh, win win a game, you know, and and I think I think Georgetown Festival, uh, the organizing team were really, you know, really good in it. It was already traffic coming in, so you know it was like like uh, like what you are facing mm. or what you're going to be experiencing is like you have traffic that is that you don't have to go and find Market so hard. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. yeah. So so I, I, it worked well. We had. Um, we had we were near the the street lah, so you know people come by, but we were also in the program booklet, right. and then so so people would come by and sit down, and there was like about 120 mm. people who sat down to play, they put their name down, and you know 
play, which was uh, good. And and Kakirima is not a fast game. Mm. You know, s- some some took uh, half an hour to finish. Some some took two hours to finish. Wow. Yeah, but we had two two uh, uh, game play tables and then a, a sales table. And and I I I I think um, I think our, our whole team really enjoyed the opportunity to launch it. And and they even gave us a budget to to, <laughs> to launch it. <laughs> yeah, to do things with. Great. You yeah. Earn money. Yeah, yeah, you, you get a bit of money okay, from that's me too. That's the part that I don't have. But <laughs> that's awesome. Yes. Yeah. So so yeah, you know, it, it, I think it's good to to for your individual launches to mm. sort of hook up with uh 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 organization or festival or event that makes sense mm. to your game. Um. Yeah. I think what I see from these two situations, you, you both had this very fortuitous, uh, coincident, topical relevance, mm. right? Mm. With the platform that you launched on and the platform mm. that you I launched on. I was already, I'm already. Well, you put it I've been part of yeah. Joshan Fest. I mean, we've been okay. supporting okay. Joshan Fest for maybe eight years. Right. Mm. So, so it's still okay, maybe yeah. not yeah. relevance, but the, mm. the topical relevance. The light yeah. 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 is there. Topical mm. relevance. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Um, well, uh, I've I've also been to Reefsticks launch as well. They mm. did that in December, right? Um, and that was what I felt. What they did right was um, well, number one, they had to do it because of uh, you know, they got a YSELI grant to to publish, right? Right. Um, but only the first hundred copies, mm. um, and so they had to express the gratitude. So it was it was. Partially ceremonial, mm-hmm. uh, they managed to get most of their uh, environmental partners in as well. Right. But I think that um, what do you call that? That, but what they didn't get, I think, is uh, news coverage. So that one is the yeah. sticky point. And but at least, right, it's an entryway. If anything, mm-hmm. they're going to come for it's probably a, a, a launch event. The question is um, how I think that a lot of what designers not designers, self-publishers don't do very well mm. is media relations. Yeah. Um, we are very lucky to get that one uh, Chinese Yeah, and, and that's also because you, you jumped in and helped. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, you wouldn't have time to even Actually, send out did, stuff. Uh, so for our GDF event, did she publish it already? I don't know. I don't oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. so this is my question, right? Because as we lead up to the, the launch, we are also thinking like, so we've written a draft of our press kit mm-hmm. and then a lot of people were saying like you know it's a Saturday no media is going to show up and then people are saying like do you know that you have to like you know uh, send it to them by a certain time and you have to follow up the call and then if reporters don't want to show up is that something that you can send them so there's, there's you can do a lot of effort but you don't know what's going to make a hit yeah you know and, and that's my question right with this media thing because the reason why we are approaching media is because we want to get it out of our circles and into another sphere, right? And then the question also, when I was writing this media release, uh, I was uh, talking to a friend, and she says like, make sure that you have all the places where people can buy the game mm. also listed there, so that as soon as people see it, they like it, they know, okay, these are the places that I can buy physically, these are the places I can buy online, this is your next event. So then I'm like, shit, I have to. Yeah. <laughs> I have yeah, to have yeah. the next event just because I launched it. You know, and I'm like, oh, I'm so like mind blown. And I don't know how you guys do it or how it's presented. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, 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 I was like, where, where can you get the game? Yeah, you can come to where we are right. and then you can buy it. Right. And, and we got about maybe 40, 40 over sales. Okay, that's yeah, really which good. Which is quite okay. Mm. That's really good. So then the question, uh, the other question is because my team's really small, we're, we're really thin on the ground. Uh, we are relying on volunteers for the day, um, right? Yeah. And then the thing is like, I don't know what the best case scenario is, but on paper, on paper la, cita cita, right? Cita cita hopes is that we at some point get organized and have like you know QR code for like okay quick pay, <laughs> QR code for where's our Facebook page? <laughs> so then instead of having to explain people go here, go there, go there, it will be just like click. They have it on their phone, everybody we assume is going to have a phone and, and, and do that, you know. So the only thing we think will be a showstopper will be people not knowing how to use a QR code scanner. Hmm. So That's that, already, already a lot more advanced than most right? yeah. designers. <laughs> no, but yeah, we're also thinking of like how, 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 and then the, 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 the whole how do you get this into the news? Because 
I even went to a point where asking a friend like just just give me one reporter that you know sure I said sure will get so don't don't waste time with like sending so many people you know nobody has that list nobody has that magic list I also don't have a magic right. list we had a bunch of this before before we actually had a published copy mm-hmm. because it's been a, maybe a year and a half mm-hmm. but last year when we didn't have a copy and, and we were invited to be part of a heritage celebration exhibition mm-hmm. so it's like two months mm-hmm. you know, three they wanted three prototypes there people could come in and out to play mm-hmm. uh, and uh, so we printed this these cards to at least you know people can pick uh, pick with them take with them and uh, with our Facebook and Instagram and we didn't have a Gmail then, so <laughs> so it's just you know mm. hopefully we get some traction. That's really smart. Uh, yeah. That's really smart. Yeah. yeah. So okay, okay, yeah. Because we're also like looking at the manpower, and then we're looking at like oh my god, we've never done this. So um, in terms of like um, how you want to collaborate in a in a gamma wave, right? Mm. That will be parallel to whatever you're also doing at Kuala Lumpur, or can we kind of hop on to Kuala Lumpur? Or what's uh, where's we this? We can, I can, I can ask. Where I'm is not Kuala sure. Lumpur? So that's the thing, right? So Kuala Lumpur is starting on the at the end, I think, so 28th of September. What? And it so runs like, all the way cannot. to like the. <laughs> I've not heard any marketing so far. 7th or 8th of yeah. October. Yeah. Nothing, yeah. nothing. Facebook, nothing. Mm-hmm. The yeah, website's just so a static, like. like Page with like super changi as a hashtag. Why? Yeah. Well, yeah. In previous years, I've heard a lot about it. Right? This year, it's like, this year it's like super yeah. slow. So I really don't know what's actually happening. But I know I'm on for the third, and I'm on on the fifth and sixth. So my events on the fifth, I'm working for Gertha on the third, and I'm working on Gertha on the sixth. So I kind of know that those days are exist. You know, they exist in my universe. So all the other things I don't know what's happening. <laughs> So, but yeah, that's what we were talking about. So, I was texting on the group and saying that um, there should have been a um, Tang's art for grabs. Yes. And then we were hoping that we would share a book mm-hmm. and have that as where the point of sale would be. So, then collectively, then we also share the profits there. Mm. But then, because arts for grabs now apparently has pulled out, there's a bookshop that's going to be in, but I haven't heard the name of the bookshop yet. Is it lit or we grew up with Daya? I don't know. I have no idea, but I don't think it's lit because lit's our vendor and uh-huh. when I met them, they did not say pre- a presence in Kuala in Lumpur. Uh-huh. But so, I, I, I do think Gamma Waves needs to be its own event. Its yeah. own event, you know. But, and, but what I was thinking of. Or, or it could be a side like festival, I don't oh, know. Okay, so what I was thinking of, sorry. A fringe um, deck, remember? So I was hoping in, in my bag there's one here. So what I was thinking was maybe because we are going to put out our decks and if we're going to put out any information that people could scan or read or a poster or something, I feel it would be, uh, I feel responsible to share with people that TDGDMY mm. exists. Mm. And, I and we're going to have a big launch party. Correct. <laughs> so maybe if we have a date for our launch for that. Right, then you can say during your one that <laughs> exactly. that's the next event. Pitching okay. Up. Sorry, so this is my okay, playdeck. Why? It's like a oh, No, no, because I put it, I just dump it in my bag, so I cover it, so this is my playdeck. So I was thinking... Is that a new, is that new packaging? No, 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 this is my, <laughs> my personal deck. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because of the... No, you know, you all get bashed up, right? So the box... We're going to have limited ones at... Uh, where is it? In BB? Uh, Tribeca. Tribeca. Yeah. So the idea was, this is how the deck looks like on the when we are selling it. I was hoping to have a TTGDMY sticker. Okay. Oh, okay. Cold brand. You know, you know, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we talked about it last time. We talked about it last, 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 yeah. last time, though. I'm not going to put it on <laughs> any side. I, it's, yeah. it's like, it's like an, you know? an endorsement. Yeah, yeah. Sure. and I think people need when, to know that the collective is strong enough to actually offer you a bunch of things. Right? What? what, 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 <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think I think that's something that we could do. Or we could have like a little standy that says TTGMY mm. and then ha- have a, a a link or maybe a, like a menu of different games and yeah. people mm. could scan. Because I saw Chunian put up the board game geeks links for all the other people. Sorry, we don't thank you yet. No, it's okay, okay. Eventually, so you know. I, actually, 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 
uh, people can help you. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. It, does, it doesn't have to be you. Yeah, oh. you don't have to be the one. Uh, oh, yeah. 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 I think yeah. lepak game is it's there. It's very hard for, to be from to write that thing because you have to be very third party about it. And I end up like oh, I'm saying too much in this. I need to like stop. No, I need to like cut the the text. You get me? So maybe it's easier something. Yeah, I can. Either. Like I can do it. He, yeah. you guys can do it. Yeah, just need to submit it. Yeah, and then the moderators will take their own sweet time. What what eventually mm. they will. But but for Kaki Lima, they actually um they didn't want to do it. Yes. Uh, within a week, yeah. Within a week, they said our names, the artists and designers' names, mm-hmm. took a few months. Okay. Mm. I'm I'm cool with that. Yeah. Cause I'm I'm thinking as we ramp up towards the launch, what are what's on my checklist? You know. So I have like okay, this media thing is like a big like uh, excuse like a monster. Yeah, it is. And then like the invite is like uh, it's another monster. And like <laughs> if I I can send like a hundred thousand invites, right? How many and physical warm bodies are gonna show up? Yeah. Mm. And it's black fucking box, right? Am I gonna fill it? How do I do it? I put twenty rows and then I like hide the other chairs. Oh, and then people come and open the chairs. Bit. No, what do Actually, you do? <laughs> that that space you can do a whole gamma wave, a small gamma wave. Yes. There it's this yes, size. Yes, yes, yes. No, it's bigger. Even like this. Because yeah. it has like, sm- like small little wings. Nooks, yeah, it's yeah. the nooks that you can open up, open up, open up. Ah. So, talking about gamma waves, right? Do you guys have a sense of when that's going to happen? No. So, because, th- I mean, this is literally the first time yeah. we are so, really talking about it. So, we're trying to get people to say yeah. when is good for them. How soon do you want it to happen? Not so soon. Maybe December. <laughs> December. Yeah, yeah. Uh, December is quite soon, no? Okay. Oh, it's manageable for her. Ma- it's mm-hmm. What's manageable lah? It, it can be later. Yeah, okay. December. Uh, December is fine. December two. Uh, uh, How about okay. you? Okay, okay December is okay for me too. Okay, so, so I think you're, you're think coming in December. Probably <laughs> 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 not. Probably not. <laughs> so then I'm thinking maybe one of the things to scout out is since the success of complimentary events in a venue that you don't have to pay for is like a key top priority maybe looking out for events and looking out for where we can then so what, what I'm not familiar event? with Malaysian culture is is, um, is Christmas a big thing here like for gift giving and, and buying games uh, stuff do you guys see a big uptick in that? it depends it's a consumer thing yes like malls do see like an uptick uh, retail uh-huh. sales also goes up yep. mm-hmm. but like in, there's no like extended two week holiday no, you're right. But I mean, sales go up. So yeah, sales, if, sales you, if you're up. launching a game, but you kind of yes. still want to so launch in like November early or something. December is a good, yeah. good time. Right. To Lots of people are to uh, yeah. and buy Co- different games. It coincides with the school holidays. So yes, that actually right. helps. So yes. Yes. when when does the school holiday start? Uh, late November. Late November. Uh, late November. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. One, one generally, a uh, generally an uptick in retail along the, uh, mm. during that month. My like parents yeah. are occupied with kids. It sounds like if you guys are going to do like simultaneous launches, the first week of December. In every different store and every different venue you could would help help the venue and help you guys and it would all coincide perfectly for that. Mm. So that means Gamma Wave is a series of small launches happening. Not, in no, the not necessarily. Okay. Uh, there's no. It could be a boom, big kind of thing. Yeah. A lot of people. We're just talking about it now. Okay. As in, we could have like multiples. You could do your like a traveling thing, but with one anchor Gamma Gamma Wave as well. Right. But I think everybody, wow. everybody's already like doing their, <laughs> their traveling thing and you know yeah. looking at uh, more individual events. Mm. But um, I think I I, I would so you guys, for you guys are talking a lot about gamma wave. But did you guys come up with the name for that, or is that is, there, is that something else that is also being called gamma wave and like the idea kind of? Oh, so we have this. Yeah, so we have alpha yeah, meets, alpha meet. yeah. then beta yeah. cons, and, which then alpha, okay. and then therefore it is a gamma wave that's gotcha. the launch. And this is the launch. So what are that was going to be the first one, or is that being the first there's one? There's never first been one a, ever. Yeah, right. first one ever. There's never been a gamma wave before. Mm-hmm. We had one beta con, and by its organizer's standard back then, uh, it was not worth the effort. Yeah, yeah. So what um, is the difference between the, the different events? Is it right. Gamma wave is one big thing. Or? Uh, yeah, so Gamma Wave is supposed to be a launch party, a joint launch party. Uh, Betacon is supposed to be like a proto spiel or like a big pre uh, playtesting convention, where Alpha meets are smaller uh, playtesting uh, community meets. Uh, and then I kind of wrote on that like naming schema to with this as Delta Chats. Gotcha. And so what is like what would you say are the top three objectives of the Gamma Wave event? Without saying it's just a big event, what are the is it to drive sales, is it to drive recognition, is it to get lots of people? What what are the top three objectives? Hmm. I Okay, let me say I don't have them on hand, but I'm so I'm gonna wing it what I would think would yeah. be the best. 
Number one, because games come together, we have like more manpower in like spreading them, uh, spreading uh, what there's more spillover. So for example, um, Nisha will cover more like the environmental uh, side of things. You will cover more the heritage side side of things. So if um, you know, I will cover like I will cover if I will launch the game, I will cover another side of people. So if you could bring all of them together, there might be more spillover than uh, there's a critical mass of publicity that we can do. Mm. So, yeah, drama people to joke and have a launch as well. So they they will get like more mass market crowd to try and look your games and your people will look at their games mm. and then we will eventually drive up sales better. Right. For TTGDMY, it means that we have more legitimacy. And, what is TT? Uh, so that's our organization, Tabletop, Tabletop Game, Game Designers of Malaysia. Okay. Technically, we're not registered. Uh -huh. Eventually, because of this, we actually need to talk about registering as well. Um, <laughs> And that's also on the cards. Eventually, we will hold a fun Delta meet for that. Sorry, Delta chats. Okay. But yes, um, so what, number one is pu public, you know, co publicity. Mm. Uh, number two is for TTGDMI branding. Mm. Uh, I would say also number three, we also we basically also need to to groom the market more. We don't have yeah. a lot of board gamers in Malaysia. Um, my my understanding is that like um, you know, there's always there's always the risk of trying, uh, especially uh, for board game cafes and uh, community organizers, there's always the risk of uh, people eating into each other's pie. So okay. there's, if, you, if you don't think about growing in community, then there's only so many number of players. It's either they go to you or they will come to me and it's at the expense of each other. Mm -hmm. So I think that was a big concern in Chiang Mai. It turned out to be a complete opposite. Really? So, yeah. it's a, so um, you know, I, I would live there about two, I guess it's three years now, about two and a half years ago I was living there, um, but I knew the guy who is now the, the distributor, he kind of, he didn't set out to be the distributor for board games in Chiang Mai, but he was like the first one to kind of build a shop around it and stuff like that, and so he ended up doing it. And then suddenly over the last five years, slowly one shop opened and then two shops opened, but then suddenly there's like seven, eight, nine, ten shops. Wow. and. It just the market hasn't really died. It's not like less people show up to any in any individual shop because now there's suddenly ten shops. It's actually okay. We go here on Thursdays, and then half of that group also goes to this place on Saturdays, and then half of that group also goes to this place on Tuesday. And so it actually just has grown the community rather than eat into each other. And Chiang Mai is nowhere near as big as Kuala Lumpur is. Uh, Chiang Mai. Yeah, Chiang Mai, Thailand. I, 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 I was hearing Shanghai, not Chiang Mai, but if this is Chiang Mai, that's amazing. Right, so in Chiang Mai, I don't know what the population really is, but it's not a huge city, right? It's kind of in that midpoint right now, and they've got at least, I think, five to ten serious active shops I, for I playing and buying board games. So I, I want to know thing. what they are doing that, like, you know, that... What's that, working. What's working, right? Because so far, I've not seen that market hunger for board games. Right? It's very tame and muted. Mm -hmm. Like you are not yeah. seeing people like crowd into like game stores or. Well, there's not. I would say uh, for the seven months that I lived there, it's not like we had like just like a super packed fifty people one night type of thing. It's just that we have a group of core seven people that always pretty much always show up every Saturday. There's like seven to ten that always show up at Rob's bar, which also has board game room, right? <laughs> and then there's a sort of an influx of another ten of like five are new and then five come, but they only come like once a month, right? But then this other shop will have a similar, like maybe they get another five that also go to Rob's, but then they have their own kind of group. Mm -hmm. um, and in Chiang Mai, you have, you have two distinct communities for the board game shops. There's a couple shops I never went to because I don't speak Thai. It's not that I wouldn't be welcome there. It's just their 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 audience is mostly Thai people and they're speaking Thai, and so being there would either slow it down or or just be difficult to suddenly have to mm -hmm. explain all the rules in Thai and then have to explain it again in English and have to try and work through that. So it's like why I don't need to go there. There's there's all these other shops that I can go to. So each each one had their own group of people, but it was all still a bigger community for Chiang Mai overall. Like for me, I, I what I experienced is once we were selling, I can't remember where, I think at GMBB we had a, yeah, you had a, a pop-up selling. There, right? yeah? So there was this, um, like I think he was a high school kid mm -hmm. and he bought wheat sticks before. And he was like, I can't play with my friends. Uh. My friends want to sit down and play, it goes a lot of thinking. <laughs> like, okay. yeah, but when he played this, he was like, I can totally play this with my siblings. And so he has both now, 
Mm-hmm. And he's like, he ha- he brings both whenever he goes. He follows us on Instagram and he drops his messages once Aww. in a while. Yeah, he's, he's really cute. And, and basically what he says is like, yeah. So if people don't want to, to think so much or, you know, they, they're mm-hmm. not in the that series where they have to be a role player and make decisions according to their um, to, to, to their their title, they can play something like this, which is very quick, very fast and very friendly. And he, he's, he's just really happy because for him, he... He likes the environmental aspect of it and he's like a high school kid who really only kind of fuses his friends to people who like to do his scout stuff and things like that. So that, that kid's like a bit alien but yeah, he's so so totally cool, uh-huh. yeah. So he, he buys he buys games from I think uh <coughs> pardon? Game, yeah, so some other online thing and, and he's got something about like recycling and he's got something about something else. I'm like, okay. So a whole equal set of games. Nice. How old is he again? It's about 17. 17. Yeah. That's the other thing is um, when you're growing the community, right? It's like you don't introduce people with Twilight Imperium. You introduce <laughs> people with like Splendor, Ticket to Ride, stuff like that. So you need yes. to make sure you have a, a lot of gateway games mm. or similar family slash gateway games at lots of locations. And then you sort of, okay, well, you like that. And then you kind of keep stepping them up and stepping it in. Mm. So you need to make sure that these. You know, the other thing is the culture of the board games, right? Uh, the, the cafes themselves. In Chiang Mai, um, most of the places, it's free gaming as long as you buy some drinks and some snacks. Whereas mm-hmm. if you get a, another place where you're charging by the hour, then, you know, there's a little bit more friction of getting people to, to really get into the hobby. Unless they buy the game and then take it home, then they're not mixing as well. Yeah. Um, one of the things we're seeing, I, I've noticed in Bali, is we've got about 10 or 20 people that come to the game shop. And they'll mix and play with anybody, but then the rest of the people that come to the game shop, they come with their core group of four, and then they don't, you invite them, but they never join your game, they never invite anybody to join their game. They come in, they play with their four for two or three hours, and then they leave, and then, you know, you never interact with them as well. So I think there's also that cultural thing of of making sure that culture of inviting people into games. Yeah, senseless. Uh, for my idea, Senseless is Cafe more, is more open, more whereas the other PJ ones are more... Because like everybody yeah, goes there with people already. They already people they already know, yeah. so they don't mix around. So, like that, I've been, I've been half meaning to try to push more of the latter than the former. But okay, yeah. that's another conversation. Yeah. Right. So the reason I asked about your objectives with the, with the Gamma Wave is I noticed you didn't really mention coexisting, promoting, co-promoting local shops. Right. That wasn't mm-hmm. part of your objectives. Mm-hmm. Why yeah. is that? Um, well, Alpha Beats kind of does that. Really. Well, no, it's not so much promoting. Really it's, um, it's just kind of having a chat with everyone yeah. in the ecosystem. Yeah. Um, I think if I might, if I might just add, uh, because that, that a similar point came up to me during the discussion as well. So the, the, the gamma waves is, if it as it's being discussed now, it's going to be quite a major event. So, um, so you want to you want to get the buzz, you want to get get the news out to more people, you want to get more people involved in the community, but. Um, so you'll get the pub- you'll probably get the publicity there. So the question is, what happens after that? So I'm just taking my own experience from my business. So a couple of years back, we did a big marketing thing, but uh, we didn't really think through the the, the follow up to that. So you get the buzz, but then not having pre-positioned your sales point. So this is the commercial part of it. So you get the buzz, and then after people say, oh, nice, great product, everything, and then but. Where do I go to buy it? Mm. So I think that should probably. I mean, you at some point you have you have to be, have a bit of the hard nosed commercial mm. uh, aspect uh, there. So you put on all the effort into designing these great board games, and ideally you would like people to buy them at some point. So I think the probably the gamma wave should have uh, well uh, that component in as well. So, which ties into what you're saying, where the shops are, where can I buy this? Well, not only that, uh, I like where you're going because you're talking about what happens after the event, what's the follow-up, how do you keep people in mind, right? So, even if you, let's say you have a successful event, right, in a month people are going to forget about it, right? That's just the nature of people and life and things, unless you have some way to follow up and and something to follow up with them. But what I was more interested in um, is if you want to have a big event, you probably want to have a bunch of small events leading up to the big event or a bunch of small press releases or news cycles or something leading up to the big event, right? And if you're talking about the board game community as publishers, well, who's going to sell your game if you're self-publishing? You want the stores to sell your game. So you should find, I think one of your top objectives should be finding a way to involve those stores 
so that you both benefit from that, right? Um, so my idea, anyway, I'll just throw this out there, um, is have some mini events, you know, weekly or bi-weekly or Wednesdays or Saturdays or Wednesday and Saturdays around town at different board game events where you're promoting Gamma to their customers, but likewise the Gamma event will then trickle back to promoting their store and vice versa. And I think that that's actually a really good idea. So you, you have like a string of opening acts. Which I didn't bring. Right. So and then and then get get right. everyone so instead of competing, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone's actually so this week it's your shop. That's true. Next week it's your shop. Next, week it's your shop. Next week, then after that it's mine. So no, no. everyone gets a piece of the publicity pie as you build up the opening act to the main event. Right, especially because if you yeah. want Gamma Waves to be a big event, you need people to, to keep it in mind and they need to be remember they need to be reminded of it in some useful way. Mm -hmm. You know, leading up to the event, you can spam their email, but that's is that really as effective of what are you spamming them with or what are you sending them, right? If you're inviting them to a board game event and then you afterwards you send an email with how many people showed up at the board game event or whatever, and that just benefits you guys as well because then you're at each of these events you should be demoing a game or a couple games and selling those games or taking pre-orders at that store and then delivering the games after the Gamma Wave launch, right? Um, the other thing is is then you're leveraging the store because if they're going to benefit from it then what are they going to do they're going to hopefully you should talk to them and give them the materials give them the brochures and and what they should send to their email list so then they're actually sending their customers to gamma wave and you're sending gamma wave customers back to them yeah. so it's more of a collaborative rather than a competitive thing let, yeah. let me let me just share what we experienced in uh, Georgetown <laughs> Fest uh. I do. Uh, because for Georgetown Fest um, we wanted to open it up as you said you know to the stores but it's in Penang so we we tried to reach out or we did reach out to the I think there are about five stores, five, six stores in, in Penang. Uh, but not I mean one or two one was a bit too far away. Uh, one uh, another two were more uh, magic uh, yeah magic the gathering yeah, stores yeah. versus board so game so stores. So that so that left uh, maybe three uh, dealing with board game stores and another mm -hmm. one and a half doing like miniatures and also there's one store that does everything um so so i have to say it was a quite challenging because I, I had to be the ground person <laughs> to talk you know to to go to each one and and then and then and then i i realized that there's a lot of you know Politics. like there's, oh, yeah. a, lot there's a lot of under yeah, under TLDR kind of, territoriality <laughs> yeah. and and it was something very different from what i experienced because I, I i mean i'm new in in ttgmy uh and um and uh, and the camaraderie that i found here may not be so much when when suddenly you open up into to the to, retail stores the to, ones to stores yeah you know uh, I, I mean they they try not to they try to sound like they they're not as I've done. Some of them may be here. <laughs> 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 uh, for all <laughs> intents and purposes, yeah. we would like to work with stores yeah, yeah. as yeah. much as possible. Yeah. But sometimes but, we find them but difficult. Re but reality is, uh, yeah. they will have their own thing, and 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 I have to work a lot. So because because I just launched launched my game, and uh -huh. actually post of that then or while that's happening, I'm also like figuring out how to put my game in. In the different stores, and, and uh, uh, I was quite thankful for one of the Penang stores that that uh, that I sometimes game with the store owner, and so so he he like you know took up took up game, and then mm -hmm. he's like kind of my distributor to the rest of the no, board no. game co uh, store community. <laughs> but uh, but it's it's actually really ch challenging, uh, and you know I had to personally like go travel, go to KL, look and uh, fight like. Uh, sometimes message them and say, "Hey, do you do you want a free copy of my game? <laughs> you know, so to get placed in you know, yeah. uh, and then some some would invite me to like have play sessions, uh, yeah. uh, which were some some were quite populated. Some I just sat there and and uh, read stuff <laughs> or, or looked at other games. So I was doing that, um, but you know, I. I, I think it's it's uh it is a way maybe that's why we should also call it uh, part of gamma ways it is a it is a wave that we need to uh, circumvent uh, or navigate through mm -hmm. because because the the in, intra cultural you know thing going on mm -hmm. within the wider community it's not there yet, you know so but not, saying that 
I think it's definitely important for Gamma Waves to include um, uh, yeah. board game stores and a wider community. It's just, you know, yeah, yeah. We, we, can, we, we need to manage our expectations of what's going to happen. It's only the horse to water, we can't make it great, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then, and then I, we also need to talk to I think ga game designers yeah. who yeah. are, they, they need to price their game, which I find out the yeah. hard way. They need to price the game in such a way that that you know stores are going to take 30 40% yeah. sometimes yeah. they want to take 45 you know so so you you need to before you <laughs> you do that you need to do that and uh, yeah, and you have to figure out the margin don't tell you about it before you publish right yeah, yeah. yeah. and like how do yeah. you go and have this conversation and mm. what are the leverages you should look at before you actually start the conversation because there are a lot of things when you go like when i went one person told me it's 40% then when I went, it's like thirty percent. Then I'm like, oh fuck. Really? <laughs> <laughs> you do have to build an occasional you know, price so points like, when yeah. you're manufacturing. Sometimes you yeah. can you can ask people certain things, but having a community that can uh, that so we need to be different mm. to be able to tackle this. You know, so if we know these are the predispositions of those organizations and the the, the stores and whatever, mm. we, we need to prepare have, ourselves. Yeah, yeah, we need to prepare ourselves. Well, here's, yeah. here's another thing to consider though. When you were doing that, you you, you were there to promote your board game. Right, and the store looks at that as oh, this person is trying to sell me a board game, so there's automatically going to be some resistance because they don't want to take up uh, the capital and the shelf space mm -hmm. if your game isn't going to sell. Right. Gamma Waves is going to be a completely different thing, mm -hmm. right? Because you're the first if you do what I'm, you know, suggesting, right? Doing some sort of mini event at their store, you're helping them to bring people in on a day. And you can help them pick like a day that's maybe not so busy for them normally, right? Mm -hmm. So if Tuesdays are dead for them, and you can help drive 20 people there on a Tuesday, then they're going to benefit from that. Yeah. And that's much more of an easier conversation I mean, than I, here's my game and I want to promote it. I, I didn't, yeah. I didn't go about it in such that you know, can you put my game on the shelf? Because I, you know, right. I, I didn't have, I didn't feel, I'm not a very good seller. No, that's I what they're, that's what's yeah. going through their mind. But, right? but one of the things that we have been trying to do is to promote. Malaysian games as in general. I think we have we have a mini zine that neither of us. Yeah, we do. We have a mini zine that, that we okay, that publish about, for yeah. the GTF that has a list of Malaysian board games. Yeah. And also stores. <laughs> yeah. Also stores. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 you know some of our games are. You know, Jen yeah. Jen should do a good job in. Oh, yeah. Sam's also. Yeah. Are there more of those mini zines? Can I put it out? Well, we, yes, yes, you can. Really uh, help will, folding will, it. Yes. Uh, <laughs> no I problem. I got. I got some learning students. You have to like cut. And four in a row. Oh, room. I know. And also oh, a man yeah, one of the stickers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you need a Victorian uh, factory, a Victorian oh, era yeah, factory. Yeah, really la. La. <laughs> so, so, so I'm taking a, a bunch of, because uh, tomorrow there's going to be a Singapore card and board game meetup uh, in the National Design Center. Mm. And uh, so I'm bringing a stack of TGMY zines. And, uh, my suitcase is, <laughs> is up of. Not my games, but other people's games. You know, Rimba going there to show. Yeah, Rimba is going as so. well. I buy my own copy like, of Rimba. Like. You want a copy? No, no, I, not enough to wait already. I want to support her. Uh, what do I want to say? I don't know. I'm I'm sorry. Now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with, with that being said, uh, someone Mike did ask you, like, um, what do you think your, based on your observations, do you think more board game cafes charge based? On the hourly rate of per play, what is the dominant model of, of uh, that like, you, in my experience? What, yeah, in my yeah, experience. experience. No, so in, um, the places that I'm used to playing in Chiang Mai, there's one place that charges a daily. I think they charge a daily rate, and they also have um, an all-day package rate, right? So, uh, and and according to him, he had to do that because people were. Going there, they were playing, not buying the food. Maybe they buy one soda or something, and then they would all leave to go eat, and then they would all come back oh, to okay. just play, right? Um, uh, and so he started doing that, and I personally stopped going there for a little while just because of that, because I'm not used to that. Every place that I've been to in the U.S., the places in Chiang Mai and the place in Bali, they might have a minimum food order, but there, there's no hourly rate, right? There's no table rate, unless I've been... I take that back. There's one place in Las Vegas that had a monthly membership, or you had to pay a, a, an entry fee every day. But so most of us were happy to do the monthly membership. But he had like I don't know, like 500, 600, 700 games. This is like a major library. Wow. Um, and I've also seen some places where, if you wanted to reserve a table, there or some of them had like a private room for like, especially for like Dungeons and Dragons or something where you don't want 
tons of people milling about and a bunch of background noise, then yeah, maybe they either charge a food minimum for that room or an actual, this is what it costs to rent the room for three or four hours type of deal. But most places that I'm used to, you know, the board games is a way for them to get you in the door to buy food and, and because they love board games, right? So they don't charge a, an hourly rate for that. Um, and if they do charge an hourly rate, then what happens is people connect with people there and then they start playing at home more than they go to the store. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if they actually make a lot of money with that, that route, right? Because then, then the people are only going there once in a while versus going there on a regular basis. To be fair, Centralist actually um, uh, actively seeks out board game design, uh, local board game designers, and and yeah, you know like th there's a there's a uh, a play you know, a day play se session, and so people who come to play that particular game, uh, like when Katrina was there, the people who come. He, he advertised beforehand that you will get free tidbits if you play Kakilima, or you get a voucher, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that, is, that is so awesome. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, really awesome. Sorry. Coming back to this voucher thing, mm -hmm. right? I was even thinking about, because of the launch, um, uh, we also know that, I, so I, because of the work that we do in sustainability, have a head-on values this captaincy when it comes to consumerism, mm. right? Mm. And so me and my partner, when we talked about like, hey, do we give a discount? You know, how, how do we get people to buy on the day, right? Mm. And Christmas is around the corner, and so a friend was saying, why don't you just give out, like, you know, uh, buy for Christmas, have a Christmas sale. I'm like, in October? Sounds a bit odd for an organization that doesn't believe in consumerism, you know? So maybe we would promote something or give you a voucher that you can get a discount when you buy in the stores which are our vendors. Yeah. You know, and that that's something that we are considering. We've not made a decision on it yet. Mm. But yeah, what do you guys think about stuff like that, you know? Because mm. you're not so if you did Gamma Wave and at Gamma Wave you gave out discount vouchers that they could go buy in the store, in the store. or go and play in the a particular store. And you know, that, that well, getting, get think, people back out again. Yeah, I think getting the stores to, to co if they if this if the if the normal culture here is for the store to charge an hourly rate mm. or a daily rate to mm. go play then getting them to understand that if they co-sponsor the event and give out these vouchers and that will drive people back to their mm -hmm. store, it's going to benefit them in the long run because mm -hmm. it's all about, you got to, you know, for them, the Gamma Wave co-sponsoring and co-promoting should be about acquiring new customers. That's the real value for them. Mm -hmm. yeah. They already have their own customers. Mm -hmm. Gamma Waves probably isn't going to add to the, their customers spending more or coming back more. Mm -hmm. So it really needs to be about a, a message of, hey, Let's work together and get more new customers for you. You probably spend X number of dollars every month getting new customers. How many customers do you get? Well, if you break that down, you're spending, you know, mm -hmm. 40 ringgit per customer per month to get a new customer who may last one time or 10 times or whatever. Mm -hmm. If we get you, you know, 10 new customers for less than that, that's a that's a win-win for you guys. But I think that's a cascade um, effect. I like your you idea of the, mm -hmm. the voucher because that's what you guys should be doing at the mini event, though. Is you should mm -hmm. be giving them, come out to a mini event and get 10% off a gamma wave thing, mm -hmm. right? Which also, if they get that ten percent off thing and they they came and played for that, then they're more likely to buy the gamma wave yeah. ticket. If there's if gamma wave is charging tickets, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if you mentioned if that was going to do that. Well, or I wanted to do that for GTF as well. Like like play X number of games and then you get. A mm, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, but okay. Um, <laughs> just well, just well, like, uh, what is like the the biggest number of of uh, attendees that you you've ever had in in, in an alpha meet? In the alpha meet, okay. Yeah. Well, any any event any that, event. that we posted. Big okay, event. so big events. Um, <coughs> there was one thing in the two thousands, and then there was I think MagaCon or MegaCon that was in uh, Mid Valley, which we were at with uh, Buddy in two thousand eleven like that. I was uh, in 2011, in case that's not good. <laughs> uh, I was mentioning the place that we went yesterday. Yeah. Um, so there was one big one there that was hosted by a big uh, board game store down, so around somewhere in PJ, but they didn't repeat it. Then we um, GTGDMI really kicked off when like uh, all the board hosted uh, KotaCon in Publica as well. And that one, we actually had very decent crowds. Um, numbers like just roughly? Uh, I think for for Kotakon, there was like one to two thousand people. Wow. That's okay. That's pretty good. Because like they had 
uh, because it's in the center court, you know, there was a lot of milling around, mm. and then they uh, they section off a play, a, a, like uh, a space for three play, mm -hmm. and that was full most of the time. So I would estimate maybe five hundred to one thousand people. So that's four or six. That's just that's mostly all the board. Okay. But um, BetaCon, uh, Kaiju KaijuCon that's hosted by uh, KDU. KDU. I think we also only have like 200 200 is already giving it a lot already BFF how many? Should be more or more than one BF, more, uh, BFF more we had Sorry BFF uh, uh, BF. But BFF. Fringe Festival uh, uh, We didn't okay. count right? Should be more Should right? be more Quite But it was very touch and go It's mm. very casual um, You had good sales because there was a lot of eye eyeballs But like in terms of actual play not really It wasn't great um, so it sounds, it sounds like, like having a, like a co-hosting it with another event mm. makes it more viable. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, with that being said, um, I'm gonna read out some comments. Mm. Um, Cameron has comments about uh, pricing, uh, which is uh, some. It actually his thinking is that it depends on the cafe's clientele. So if if the clientele typically is very uh, casual, which treats the experience more like watching a friend, uh, watching a movie with friends. Mm -hmm. uh, they will, so they will do a daily rate because it won't stick. Uh, their their stars they don't stick on for the whole day. They'll come in, play one or two games, and then go off. So that's just like comparable to a movie, as opposed to more hardcore enthusiasts. We want to be there and hold day and play Twilight Imperium. Okay. Um, then he asked a question to the to the table. Do you think there is any value in reaching out to the video game community in Malaysia? If so, what are the ways you've thought about approaching it? Gamers mm. are gamers. Mm. That's my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> but like, I don't know, I also feel like like com board game geeks are video game geeks but not the other way around. Yeah, so I'm mean, like, <laughs> yeah. the, 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 which side of the spectrum are you guys interested in? Is it going to be game designers or is it the players? Because in the end, right. who's um, going to be buying the game? Then? Yeah, so... At least from an organizational perspective, Alpha Meets is more insular towards game designers, whereas uh, Gamma Waves are more public facing. So uh, game designers would only go there if they want to support other game designers, but not they like if you're not actually launching something, they don't play test it. So then, would the game design community be relevant to? Uh, because like game, well, it's because like a lot of game designers here are also self publishers. Mm -hmm. So the community, it's basically an event that's run by us for, for us to, yeah. Uh, yeah, for our own games. There are that is that are now published uh, and ready to sell, mm -hmm. and because there are no serious publishers in Malaysia who will hand, who, who will handle like all the publishing, these sort of publishing matters and publicity, um, we have to do it ourselves, and we don't all have the same sort of capacity. Mm -hmm. If not, we don't have capacity at all. We already no, started. but it's, it's really good because when I first joined, I just uh, my first deck uh, boxes came out, and there was an issue with the printing, and um, Chunyan was like, "Oh, post it to the group. Let's see what people have to say." And then everybody was very clear, like, "Oh no, reject the boxes. Make sure that they reprint." And you know, and and the confidence for me to go and say that to my printer after he had printed X number of boxes was like, yeah. "Okay." I've got people who back me up on this, you know, and I so I, it kind of it, you know because it's very daunting, right? You you send the business printer, is so daunting, right? And especially for me, I've never done it before. But hearing other people say it's okay, you can go and give this kind of pushback. It was really important because, yeah, the people have done it and and they felt it was um important to create that baseline. So when other people publish, then they also have that confidence as well, and things like you know where do you get like little sandy? So the the group kind of pulls together all these insights and I think that's really really awesome. It's the most often, often question yeah. when you get those little standees. Question of the year, right? The short answer is you approach Hua Xiang. Oh, <laughs> he's our, he's I, our I got secret hero. Go to guy, go to guy. <laughs> Mr. Stanley. <laughs> Mr. Stanley, <laughs> Mr. Stanley uh, any components you want to find? Uh, you can, can even them. hand mold them. Yeah, that's, <laughs> why I, that, that's how I remember you actually as the guy who made that little hexagonal. Oh, yeah. You mean Katan? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I don't play the game. You, you know what I haven't found it, um, in Indonesia and, and probably Southeast Asia is actually um, 
a store that caters to board game board game designers with just pieces and stuff like that. Like this in the happen. U.S., we got the Game Crafter. Yes, in the right. EU, there's the German one. I don't remember the name right off the top of my head. Uh, I can't find those little wooden painted cubes, which are so simple Asia. and universal. Come on, maybe you can open a store. <laughs> e store, <laughs> no more. Like yeah, a, yeah, a, a physical store is not gonna cut it. Yeah. Well, no, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't open these seven days a week and pay rent for no. and mortal. But no. you know, if you had a traveling box or piece. something. Yeah. <laughs> you really got to copy on. <laughs> All right. You just buy on bulk. Yeah, yeah. And, bulk, then, and then you just yeah, like parcel it out like basically a drug okay. dealer. Okay. Yeah. Put it in the middle of a chunk and then back, back, back to the first pack of free. That's your line to me. That's your line to me. Because I was looking at getting some uh, from China, but A, the import tax is really high. And B, my order quantity just isn't high enough yeah. to get it below 10 cents per square, and I, I already pay 5 cents per square in the U.S., so, hey, per hey, cube. Hey, buddy, you want some accessories? I know. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually took a laser cutting class so I can make my own, cut my own duplex board in acrylic so I don't have to buy any more. Wow. <laughs> but we do have a lot of craft shop no, uh, in an area, though. But those, no, not really. <laughs> I, I'm still thinking about the video game character. Yeah, so yeah. his question was to sell board games to them. Is um, it worthwhile? I, I the imagine the wider question is try to convert them into board gaming or tabletop gaming or like the whole spectrum. But it's very different, isn't it? Mm, mm. So there, I, I think, in, in my opinion, my opinion, nerds are nerds, right? So the nerds I know, they, they watch anime, they play video games, and they play board games, and they play Dungeons and Dragons or some sort of RPG, or they do some combination of the four. Right, <laughs> but but from a marketing <laughs> point of view, it is hard to to spend dollars and actually convert a, in a, on a video game like forum or board or group and get that to convert to board games. Mm -hmm. But if you're doing free social media marketing and you're just putting up a post for free, and you get one to ten people out of it, then that's totally worth it. So I, I personally see because I joined the game design kind of. Or game design community as well. You go to level up? Yeah, so they have Okay, that's like a okay. couple uh, weeks after this, is it? Or something uh, like that? I'm not sure about the next one, but they've been there a couple of times. And I've actually seen some of them play test uh, you know, their own card games and board games there as well. I mean, it's a much bigger community, it's actually because they've been around for so long. But, um, you know, I mean, you really want to think about whether, you know, it is the focus of the, of the program or event. You know, to drive your sales, to introduce a new game, to play test, or is it, you know, because they're designers, they're there for the same reason, right? They want to test their game. Uh, but if you're looking at more consumers who might be interested in picking up your game off of the sale, right? That's, I think, a different thing altogether. How do we convert? Well, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think there's an easy answer for this so, so far. Um, I did went to the event once. Yeah, I went there. Uh, yeah. Oh, here's my game. I, I, oh, yeah. I feel like going to level up, I feel like I feel so lost there. Like I, I don't feel like the same kind of community um, because like their mental. I feel like this the mentality is just slightly different compared to um, tabletop and board game design. But what uh, I felt is more of their. Uh, oh. You know, Malaysian culture of shyness, you mm -hmm. know, they don't approach you to ask for things and how, oh, how do you play and all those things. I'm not sure. That, that's what I felt. Are okay. you saying we all shyness? <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying that as board gamers, <laughs> board game, you know, we are social people. We come yeah. here and play instead of hiding behind our screens and mediate. Like, Okay. No, I, I don't. I don't know how serious I can be that with right, that. Right, right. But if you want to convert video gamers into board gamers, it's really simple. You make a billion dollar game called World of Warcraft, <laughs> and then you make a board game called World of Warcraft, yeah. a trading card um, game, <laughs> and then you yes. make PR Stone and bring them back so from board gaming to, I think, uh, to the computer. Max has Max and Minion. That's Max and Minion strategy, right? That's uh, the Dota, no, the League of Legends League board of game. League of Legends board games. Yeah. Um, there's there's like Warhammer kind of crosses that as well. Uh -huh. Um. But uh, then the challenge is getting IPs, and we I think so far we haven't got a very strong uh, uh, video games uh, community. We recently got a new game called Giga Bash coming out. 
I mean, whereas so, it's uh, they are as much as a developing like community as we are, except that they're just like one order bigger than we are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So uh, a, a a meeting like this, we would have like a lot more, like maybe two or three times more uh, for them, and then um, and I think the the crowd will be even younger as well. Okay. Um, I I like the the last time I've been to what level up the crowd. As in the the designers that were there, they were like oh, some of the sixteen, is it seventeen. They are younger or we are older. Same <laughs> line, same thing. <laughs> I'm looking around the table like, yeah, this is a the average is probably above thirty here. <laughs> okay. Um. Mm. And some of our well, obviously like if some uh, people like Mangkau, they they've uh, they've crossed over as well, so they are more into digital design. Mm. Um. So it's not, and there are, I would imagine there are also some people who are. Would like to do more AR stuff, so and like digital yeah. integration board games. Uh, like I think I, I posted up Taburu, right? Uh, have you heard of Taburu? So uh, Taburu is like uh, Simon games, like in digitalized digitalized board games. So it knows where your pieces are, and there's like, you can put a tablet there, and you oh. figure out things for you. So there are there are things that you can do more like that in that inter that has a different digital interface. I think Mangkau crossing over is because government is yeah, there's one, uh, yes, and there's digital government. game content more than mm-hmm. board games. Yeah. So he just made his board game into digital. There's more money and more scalability with video games. Yes, there's absolutely more demand. More, like, scalability. There's also a yes, lot more that. demand for the talent, right? So mm-hmm. okay. And it's seen as the thing of the future. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, um, so what is the what is, have you guys actually reached out to some of these video game IP companies and, and tried to work with no. them? Like, cause I, 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 no, what, I, what I've heard is Japan versus the US. The US is like super tight with any IP. They don't let anyone else touch it. They don't let anyone else work on it and they have like massive approval problems of, of getting it. So you don't really share IP, but whereas I've heard in Japan, like everyone's just super open to sharing IP and like I'm working on a, a manga and then this video game company approached me and we said you know we sat down for coffee and we signed a deal you know like <laughs> like it's just done like constantly and it's also like the culture's <laughs> used right. to that though as well mm-hmm. right I think, I think it's a couple more cultural norm because of the ethics that we function at so but what is it here do you guys see a lot of crossover potential like I think uh, Graham did direct uh, well that's because he, that was contracted to him yeah um, I think Naja is what was very big into that. Like uh, one of uh, one of the people who regularly comes, she mm. works with uh, a publishing company, so she's trying to get more uh, game designers to use local IPs, especially mm-hmm. from published work, uh, from written novels and stuff like that. Yeah. But um, yeah, have we got in touch with any of them? Who the novel? So, yeah. but yeah, it's just oh, comedy didn't merge. Yeah, we didn't really merge. So nothing really happened. Uh, I think I guess yeah. I'm not sure if it's like uh, I know like Gray was trying to work with her for a while, but like you know Gray is kind of busy <laughs> with stuff now. Um, yeah, we should so try that. We should actually. try that lot. Yeah, um, there's a I lot of uh, artists, uh, comic uh, creator. And no. um, the other thing also is that Drama Poco Tujo has a little bit of that as well. It's, it's, it's not so much one IP but like a stereotype of the entire uh, telenovela, mm-hmm. um, you know, con- tropes. Uh, so th- I think that's found a lot of success for that. And like, t- but the other thing also like, what? there's nothing, what Malaysian, I, I can't think of a Malaysian IP that would be great into making a game. So boy. maybe it's just, yeah. Oh, I think one of the <laughs> we had a there was an Indonesian video game that struck me as odd. Like the character just looked really weird to me, and then I found out that that was some sort of Indonesian like TV series. And I don't know if it was an animated okay. series or not, but it was actually like a cooking video game. But it has this like super comical like like comic book character face, not like an anime face, like even more right. straight line. Okay. Yeah, and it, but I mean it was really popular. It was one of the most popular booths at. Um, is it Beckraff, I think, it was the game convention. It could be Bob. No, it's not. So you don't have to look necessarily <laughs> no, at... No, really. I mean, you can find something in just Malaysian TV or Malaysian restaurants or something, as, as long as it's a recognizable IP and, and figure out how to work with that. With that being said, uh, Ken Wen, who asked this question, uh, had his game is uh, a shared IP that is with like the... What, you, what it was called the Unity Macroverse, right? Yeah. So it's like comic... It's, it's, it's 
it's supposed to share like a same narrative universe. universe, so there are comics in it, and uh, mm -hmm. they want to do more games in it. And his it takes place in one phase, and that's I guess. Yeah, that's easier because so then, then you're not stepping on stone, like yeah. you're not stepping on somebody else's storyline, killing off a character that wasn't mm -hmm. supposed to be killed off, that type of stuff. But um, personally, I yeah. I don't know. I don't. I don't I have no idea really how to go that far. Yeah. So is, it, is it still on topic of Yamui or like? Yeah, it, it is, is kind of like we are talking a little bit already yeah, yeah. to like the general business of okay. games. Um, should we go back so to like? Now, we were talking about the, the how, real how topic is in Gamma Wave. So the real topic is in real life events yeah, and presence. Uh, yeah. And getting IPs will actually help to that. Uh, we're trying to pull the crowd. Which kind of crowd? Just now we discussed that uh, the video gamers. Then we discuss about gigs, and uh, now we are talking about trying to use IP to pull the other yeah. gigs from, from other you know uh, fans, fan base. So where where, where are we going now? Where are we where going, are we going, going now? now? It sounds like it's an epsilon or something. Another after gamma, like alpha beta gamma, <laughs> alpha beta delta. 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 Epsilon. Epsilon. <laughs> uh, so Epsilon is the big consumer game. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. It's probably some like com community Epsilon community card. level thing. Uh, um, the follow the follow up to that, if anything. Um, I don't know. What else should we talk We've about? We've been talking about Gamma Wave for almost like the whole, whole duration, mostly. We we doing that is it? Yeah, well, well, do you want, do you want just go, or we, are we going to just, just focus on gamma wave yeah. or are we having any other yeah, events that we should we yeah, talk um, about? I guess it was relevant enough because gamma wave is actually the platform to which you want to connect to the wider mm. community, right? Mm. So I, I guess that that ties in quite well on the yeah. I, yeah. For, for me, I I I do have some question about alpha meets as well and how to you know okay because alpha meet is smaller like what he said we do some small events. events. In, in leading up to that as well, uh, instead of just you know jumping in. Okay, so uh, if we okay, so if we want to make this a big push, right, towards like a uh, December, we we organize like maybe two more alpha meets. Uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, but we need to like uh, also like other at other festivals. Yes. Yeah, I don't including know. the other we festival Ipoh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, if we're gonna have some sort of presence there. Is that, is that happening? Is it, it happening? Is it Trixie, is it happening? The other festival? Let's see if you reply. Trixie, is the other festival happening? When, where is it supposed to be? Um, October. 5th and 6th October. Okay. So there's a bit of time to kind of... Okay. And then there's sick, a sick at uh, uh, 5th SIGG, October. Yeah. SIGG. Sintok International Games, Games and, and Gamification. gamification. Whoa. So that one's more of a <laughs> what do you call the academic level event. Yeah. Um, so I'll be there. So. I'll be there. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so if we got any anything to yeah. hand out. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, the thing is, like we, if we want to really do this, we need to really lock down something. Dates. Yeah, we need to lock down a date and venue. And okay, I'm interested in, in the way another alpha meet because I'm having a, a game. Right, you got that. So. Uh, yeah. So, uh, how do we go about that? Uh, every time o we organize an alpha meet, what, what, who was the person that approached the place, and uh, you know, like this? Okay, so yeah, so stage. this was supposed to. I, I, I'm. This is one of the documents that I'm due to put out, which is how. What is the practice in organizing an alpha meet? Can it's, you go through it really fast right now? Uh, okay, the really fast is it is that if. One of us are uh, organizing Alpha Meet. Like, if you can get two or three players, someone proposes in between all of us. Players. Or uh, sorry, play uh, designers. Uh, designers who want to play test. Uh, between the couple of us, like, where is the best place we can be? Uh, we approach the place. If the place says yes, we go there. Okay. So okay. it's that ad hoc. Yeah. Oh, on average, so, like, how many people usually attend? Ten to thirty people. And then the designers share costs for the place, lah. Yeah, uh, so do, do we ask for request? we ask for donations from the play testers because of venue rental and the uh, but if there's any shortfall, the designers make up for it. Sometimes the designers will offer uh, the venue will charge money. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so some places we know that they won't charge money. We can do that as well, but there'll be pros and cons, lah. 
For example, we had one alpha meet at Garak Mudaya. Uh, they offered us the place for free, but they didn't have tables. So we had to bring in our own tables. <laughs> what? Yeah. Okay. So we had and two tables. This is just a space, right? It's just you a space. Yeah. 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 They had chairs, which is great. Uh, it was a bit. The great, the great thing is that there was more space than there were people, so we could kind of like spread out. Um, so then was, so you could just so again, bring, you brought, could just bring those like uh, floor cushions, you know, the, the square floor cushions, and just we didn't have them, but <laughs> they had chairs, so we used the chairs. We just need to bring tables. So uh, I brought in a table, Ben brought in a table. So like there were a couple of table, shitty tables on hand. So Does it have to be in any venue, or you can just meet up at a park and then sit in? <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> it uh, but oh, the problem with park is that like. Wind and all that. Yeah, it's, it's uh, yeah, the yeah. elements are and after seven then it comes dark. Mm. So oh, yeah. you can't play at night unless you have like... For Katima bring... we have our own lights. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, just on the top of my head, I'm thinking KL library would be something... Oh, you know, library. It's a yeah. nice space. Uh, the yeah. other one is the noise? Bank Rakyat. They have a library. Uh, are you going so to that's right. So they have like a special <laughs> fallen up room. Okay. Yeah. And they so have, they that's what very close know. to the Bangsa LRT and KL Central. It's like right in Oh, the Bangsa. Oh, yeah, yeah, Bangsa. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. So these are two before. spaces that I think um, if you just wrote to them, they'll yeah. be happy to let you use the space. So okay. Yeah. I think it's great that you guys can actually get 20 designers together. Well, um, <laughs> so this is no, uh, it's more like five designers. designers and then the no, other are playing the taxes. Last we had quite a number. The last one. Because the of the, the, the students. That one was void from the stu game design. Uh, uh, from a game design course. In, in, in they were also showing off their games as well. Huh? Yeah. So that's not too bad. Uh, okay, Trixie. Uh, she said that it is still on October 5th to 6th, waiting on designers to sign up their games. Uh, oh, I don't have a video that showcases how to play the game. Yeah, I thought you had. No, no, not really. Okay, it's more of a review or something. Yeah, so we're kind of working on a how to play video thing. Then we saw yours. So I we cannot like... submit. Okay, so <laughs> we need to do a Delta <laughs> chat on that as well. Sassy, 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 sassy. But okay, you look at hers. <laughs> And then you template it, okay? Right. But you with proper mics, we, there are four no. videographers there, and nobody thought to put a proper mic. <laughs> so okay. If you need it, I have equipment. I'm really doing it right now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. If you do it cool. billion, you can use Luma, and yes. we will set up cameras for you and record you. Wow. Yeah. So, 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 so we were talking about like, oh my god, she did like seven videos. <laughs> oh. <So, laughs> Origin and uh, Luma is offering video. <laughs> Yes, oh, uh, oh. How, how to play oh. video services. How okay. to play video services. Okay, so, uh, this is nice. <laughs> right? I'm going right. to do her from Big Green Dash. Okay. Uh, the other thing is uh, Trixie mentioned she wanted to share about uh, how they did the launch. Mm. So getting publicity, uh, we launched with the objective of getting publicity and highlighting our social vision. Mm. So you're also showing off what your value of the game is yeah. to the public. For sales, we highlighted our various retailers and our online store. Mm -hmm. So you've got to get your shit in order. <laughs> uh, and highlight our upcoming monthly Jom Lepaks, which is mini events partnering with cafes wow. geared with the public. So same, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. same thing. Yeah. So they can come and play with us and buy the game in person if they like. Okay. We kept the media event and the public event separate because my experience, we had to feed the media more. So I guess like, Okay, that's that's a good point. Maybe like that's why you said like they're better on weekdays, right? Yeah. So maybe we do a pre-event for the press. for the media yeah. press yeah. before the like There's there's one coming up yeah. for Delta chat now. Is it yeah. a really bad event? Like? Um, so <laughs> I'm using this space because number one, it's kind of my it's my office, so I have like more free reign over it. And um, here's all this equipment I, that you can just. I and well, that one can go wherever. Oh, it's okay. my gorilla kit. Um. Really yeah, I need strong Wi-Fi. I know the university has strong Wi-Fi, so yeah, yeah. Um, that's not too, that's that's a that's a pro. Could we come and do a video here? Ah, that one I need to ask. <laughs> but uh, actually, and there might be a studio that we can properly use as well. Oh, nice. Um, but I need to make start making inquiries. Uh, okay. so I will get back to you on okay. that. Okay. With with that being said, uh, I mean this become like a base for TV media <laughs> because I'm here. <laughs> Put your logo on the on the wall somewhere. So I, I think he had some questions that he wanted yes. to ask, and I kind of had a question if, if we can fit it in before we wrap okay, up. Okay, so let's yeah. quickly ask those questions, and then we wrap up maybe in like under ten minutes. 
Okay. My question was how you 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 uh, organize the alpha mate, which you already mentioned. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Is there any? I I wanted to ask uh, what direction which we already discussed for for the events that leading up. So okay, uh, we'll be doing like what uh, Bart <laughs> has said, like small <laughs> events leading up to the big one. Okay, fine. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Okay. <laughs> okay you. Um, so my question is to you guys: What has been the most successful way that you found new play testers for your games that weren't people that have already play tested your games? And then, um, have you guys tried to gamify some sort of reward system or to keep play testers engaged? And did it work or not? Because I actually found that setting up some sort of reward program for my play testers has had actually zero zero feedback really. What kind of rewards did you? Um, it is a bit loose, but I'm keeping points based on, and, and I posted it in our group. Like I have a, a WhatsApp group, mm -hmm. that mostly for my playtesters, I think we've got like 25 people in there. Um, and I, I post like a leaderboard, and I keep track of their points, and I, I tell them point blank, you get points for hours spent playtesting, useful feedback, oh, and any social fine. media um, sharing that you do, and stuff like that. And you know, there's really been very little uh, feedback or engagement with that. I don't know, we've used and then they can. Sorry. No, I haven't tried. And then that I, I mentioned at the bottom that I don't have you know the prizes all mapped out yet, but you'll get swag. I'm gonna have swag and T-shirts and and a few free copies of the board game for like the for different part. You know, if you get a certain number of points, you'll get these things. Oh, that's that's a whole lot more than any of us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't tried anything like that. Yeah. I yeah, think I've just been getting I some people letting kids to play. I know. I tried like, to do like solo playtest events for my board game and it was a struggle. Okay. Um, particularly because I'm trying to target like more, uh, so like I do, you know, I do a political board game, so I'm trying to get like politically aware people to come as well. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah so but I'm not politically aware, and I join this game. Uh -huh. um, so you get people like that too, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. As in that. Uh, but he wants to test both audiences, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So. Uh, it's more targeted in the sense. Yeah, it's more targeted. So in that sense, like my idea was like to try to get like uh, more politically oriented people to. Um, you know, to play test and then become my champions in the long run. Uh, but it was uphill trying to just get those people. Maybe it's just timing or like um, location. So, uh, but I also felt like people didn't, uh, because they were socially uh, politically oriented first, they had a mission. So I wasn't delivering a lot of value to them. <laughs> so I guess yeah, for yeah. value. Yeah, it's the value. For a lot of these events, like uh, they, for people to show up, you must demonstrate the value. Mm -hmm. uh, what are they getting out of it? Is, um, as in, you can't entice them with like uh, that. Those are small things, and like you, uh, that sort of like gamif like gamification and uh, incentivization just does. I, I think helps build an identity and like you know some sort of pride. Um, maybe that's something that all of us can think of about as well because like um, we, we, I think uh, a lot of us are not very good at branding as well, mm. right? Um, so. We'll take. We'll definitely take that advice to heart. Um, I should do more of that as well. But like, everything's coming out of pocket. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I had a lot of play testing sessions uh, with different categories of people. Uh -huh. um, and how did you how did you market to get those people? Um, you think it's more than. <laughs> <laughs> Well, okay. First, first category that was very focused on game mechanics was the TGDMY lah. And sure. Once, once it came here, then, then I would try to get the same people who had played it like a few months ago to, to, to do a, you know, play test the new version, and then, and then, I, you know, I listed, wrote down a whole bunch of stuff based on the feedback I got, uh, and there was like maybe three, two, three times. And then, uh, and then, and then in Penang, um, that's uh, in my within my team. I had to grow my own uh, board gamers in Penang. You know, I was the only one there. And mm -hmm. then, uh, then, then, uh, but I have the space, you know. Uh -huh. So, so then so I you... open it up for board gaming, and then people come in, and I teach my friends, and then now everybody's like one, one even thought and uh, pass on board gaming to another friend in Kedah, and, and now that that. Those people are opening a board game cafe. <laughs> okay, there was a book a bookshop with a board gaming uh, section. Uh, yeah. Huh? That's cool. And then uh, so sense. so within that, uh, and they they were not like serious, definitely not designers, but also not 
uh, previously bought gaming enthusiasts, but mm-hmm. they slowly became really so. So when I sit down and play with them, that's so that's level two play testers where they will play the game, and then uh, and then I will get them more often every time there's a version change or a little change, and then and see how they 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 adapt to it, and then after that, uh, the big base I had a lot of people who just you know it through exhibitions through. Uh, different events that are in Georgetown, uh, mm-hmm. then my game will be there, and, and people just come in and sit and 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 then I get get some feedback from people who are, are totally new to the to board gaming. So yeah, so that's what I'm looking for different. now. Is, is yeah. how do I get the? I should have been more clear with my question, but I kind of mm-hmm. forgot that. You know, the hobby gamers that I hang out with, I'm, I'm getting good feedback from them, and I want to know how do I get non gamers mm-hmm. to come play the game? Yeah. Well, like, the one thing I can suggest is that, I mean, uh, we've heard a lot about like the you know board game shops, but I think one thing you might not want to discount as well is that because we you know from a player perspective, we used to go to board game you know outlets, but ever since we've, we've met more people, uh, and you find that there are actually a lot of community organizers who actually do their own you know the board house. game, board game night, well, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. various venues. They'll bring like their own. Yeah. You know, yeah, luggage cool. bag yeah. full of to games McDonald's. And, and <laughs> and so I mean, like, because they're already playing games, so you mm-hmm. might as well, you know, just you know. Yeah, I'm definitely used to that in the U.S. and and honestly, it doesn't happen that much in Bali. I don't think, as right. or as much, I should say. Okay. Well, we, we get them here, so I mean, if you guys yeah. want to, you know, find out, um, you know, who's running this stuff, then yeah, just. But I think those kind of guys, like, I I know a couple of friends who have their own, like, you know, shelf covered full of games. It's really just among friends calling each other, and they're playing because it's that gang of friends. Right, right. And they're playing to master those games, and they're not buying local games. Most of them, most of them are buying, you know, from abroad. Yeah. Or so things I think, that come I think you gotta know like what what is the objective, yeah. right? Because you keep going between play test and, and selling, which I think are two very different. But yeah, 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 they're very yeah, different. Yeah, right. You're gonna play test. You know, you but might obviously, want you want to play test with people who are gonna buy your game. As well, <laughs> but you could also see like you know the kind of um, psychographics and demographic yeah. kind of groups that I play because I have two groups that I join and one of them is more inclined towards uh, you know party games right. Right? and the other one is more inclined towards medium heavy games right? yeah. so you have different types of audiences already there and yes you get same faces but you also get new people coming in out so. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just another. I guess as this group expands, then yeah, we can do a few things. But for now, <laughs> we'll straddle between two. Yeah. Um, well, uh, I guess that we'll make the call as and when and see mm-hmm. what uh, see what happens. Well, I mean, the conversation doesn't have to stop here. Correct. Uh, but things like you know, other festival, Kuala mm-hmm. Lumpur. Uh, mm-hmm. I think all these festivals, you you get a lot of people who are not more mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So well, um, do you have any uh, avenues into is that uh, urban scapes? Is it happening this year? Mm-hmm. What other festivals Who is are there? Doing urban scapes. Uh, but are they earlier on in the year? No, they're usually later part of the year. Uh, I remember last I'm year sure. I, I emailed I them and they were like, no, we're full. Um, urban scapes is run by the B people. Yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. No, public car B. Yeah, the public car B. Okay. Year end, what are the year end festivals? GTLF? GTA, GTA is yeah, very small. Um, Actually, very small. Next year, there's comic some. Comic Fiesta. Oh, yeah, we haven't talked about that, that section where's, at where's, all. Oh my where god. Where is Comic Fiesta? Oh, so Usually in December. So Can we just go bump in with them? Yeah. Yeah. But the thing is, the like, we need to talk to um, CF is obviously Jared because he's, uh, he's historically been with them. But there's a whole slew of comic, anime, games, festivals. That happens at the end of the year. The end of the year is a busy period for them. Right. Um, so like any mangaki. Yeah, any mangaki stuff like that. CF, yeah. any mangaki and CF. Toy. Uh, toy tag. T A G C C. Tag G C C. Right. I think is that done already. Uh, uh, yeah. It's already yeah. Done. Okay. Um, the problem is that um we haven't spoke like we haven't spoken to them to try to do a side event where with bot gaming. Mm. Uh, like, and usually if you want to do like uh, booths there, it's super expensive. Like we're talking about like thousands of ringgit. Uh, and if you, that's what you can merge though. Yeah, you can merge. It might 
cut costs more la, but like we're not seeing like the board game uh, the board game campaigns are not there so, at all no. right so it's very weird um but i think I, they need to because they they have their own they place are, that they have to upkeep and they don't something want to close down hanging fruit is to have opportunities like us mm. to find Actually, pop up markets are quite events good. events that would kind of give you a space. Yeah. Best case scenario, yes, free. Yes. You know, so um, you become content, uh, content partners. Yes. Yeah. 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 So like a uh, yeah. like uh, Greta P. Sarong. Oh, 16. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. So. But they only ask Ralph for to join. No, they asked me also. And but, then, but but I'm in Penang and but yeah. as soon as I said Penang, they didn't answer back. <laughs> Was it two three? <laughs> Noraina or something like that. Yeah. yeah. But pop up markets are <laughs> a good place as well because all sort of people Yeah, yeah. people Maybe go to pop up markets. Maybe is there gonna be an arts for grabs in like December? Could no. We, no. Uh well at least I don't know specifically in December but like uh I texted Pang and he seemed pretty down about it. Yeah. But uh his Li Kuang is doing stuff. Okay. And Rio mm-hmm. is doing stuff. Rio is a good space to be. Rio might be a little bit expensive, but I think if we can content provide with them, we'll see. negotiate a little bit. Do you know the people? Have you spoken to them? Does anybody know the people? Or... Well, I think um, what they call that, Le Park Trixie might be the best fit yeah, in terms yeah. of life, like lifestyle match. Yeah. Uh, Trixie is tuning in. Like, they ask for grabs. Up for grabs is no. Not. Yeah, um, down quite a lot, I think. It's last year it was they partnered with UNICEF Malaysia to to do it, you know. But then they said I don't know what's happening. Oh uh Trixie does have a contact for Rio. <laughs> there you go. Okay. <laughs> Alright, there are a lot of <laughs> Okay. Um Okay, so there are quite a number of comments on this, but we should it's that past yeah. that ten yeah. minutes already, yeah. so yeah. we okay. should wrap up. Any last comments? After the comment, we are going to talk about the next chat, right? I will just give a <laughs> brief shout out for the next chat. Uh, I'm in town till Thursday, so if you want to play test my games or meet up, let me know. And, uh, you know, there, there's still a comment section. You should read it because yeah. the last section, there were quite a number of comments. Um, and we can continue the conversation like in WhatsApp or like on the uh, on the Facebook post itself. Okay. And uh, then I would like to let all of you know, as well as viewers, all three of you. All three of you. <laughs> uh, it's good. Yeah. That's, all, that's enough. And there'll be more people who'll be watching later as mm-hmm. well. Uh, that the next Delta Chats is in, again two weeks' time, as same kind of spacing okay. out. That one we want to talk about social media. Right. Uh, and Hyrie will be around? Hopefully. Mm-hmm. Um, and the idea of that is that we also don't do social media very well. Mm-hmm. Uh, in, in, in the same idea, you can come all together and make a splash at the same time. We'll get critical mass and we'll get more eyes on it. Uh, the question is like, how do we do that? What do we need to coordinate? Uh, what are the practices we need to take uh, to take into account uh, to make that critical mass? Like, ha- I I've been trying to use hashtags, but like, uh, so what's a good hashtag? So how I heard this thing called social media wave, where you have a water group. Say you want to post uh, this image. Right. So and so then everybody. The water, yeah, and then okay. everybody Maybe at we the can start, we can talk so about yeah, starting that as that well. So yeah, that could be something. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, by the way, the uh, TTGD MY at Gurney Plaza on the 29th of September. Right. It's open. They, they don't take sales, but it's open for if anybody wants to come and help sure. be at the booth and, and play test your games or play, you know, help other people play the 29th. current games that are out. 29th, hmm. 29th of September. So, so whole day. With that, I kind of have a question like, what, what does the community need and how can you know, other people? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I kind of have that question as well. Manpower, I don't know. Infinite. Publicity. Okay. Network, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. Money. Financial support. Love or money. There is this like, one post on how you can support the artists that you want to actually support. Number one, buy, buy their works, share oh, their, their content. Yeah. Oh, uh, say you own uh, the game on boardgamegeek.com yeah, and yeah. rate it and rate it. Rate give it, us reviews. Yes. Uh, I ask questions on, I, I on, on the on games that <laughs> come up from. Go to board game events, tell your friends about it, post on social media. Uh, currently, there are uh, Kleptopoli, Vagrant Dash, Kaki Lima, Pasaraya, go and if you have a board game geek account, please go <laughs> and rate it. I, I just, I, I just, so I just someone will help me write that board game geek thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can, can be. Okay, so. 
thank you everybody for coming. We can continue like we'll turn off the the live stream, but like we can continue talking mm -hmm. for a little bit more after this lah. Okay? So everybody wave. Bye bye. bye. Okay. <laughs>